and we are thankful that you are present. If this is your first time joining us for worship on Zoom, there are a couple of things that will be helpful to know. We have a couple of people who are what we'll call virtual vergers who are working behind the scenes to help make our service go as smoothly as possible. We ask that you remain muted throughout the service, but those who are reading today uh, are invited to unmute themselves at the time of their reading and if you are singing a hymn, also unmute yourself at that moment. Uh, that does not mean that if you are sitting at home that you can't fully participate. Remaining muted, you are invited to sing out with gusto and also do the responses. Um, you are welcome to engage with uh, the service leaders or other participants using the chat box and during our time of intercessions during the prayers, you can offer your own prayer petitions there in the chat box. And so again, welcome, and I invite us to prepare our hearts for worship. Open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Good morning, church. This is Dawson Nash, and I'll be reading Psalm 139, verses 1 through 11, 22 through 23. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. <coughs> Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. 
Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while, every, while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in the field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Evil exists in our world. And I think as Episcopalians, we really don't have good language around the devil or evil. But our scriptures remind us that evil is not an abstract concept. It can be purposely sowed and can grow almost undetected alongside that which is good. Anyone at the time, listening to the parable Jesus told in Matthew's gospel would have known that the seed that the enemy planted was called darnel. It was a mean trick because darnel, it's a type of weed, looked exactly like wheat. And you wouldn't know the difference until both plants had matured. Uh, I read that darnel doesn't, um, it doesn't plant, it doesn't flour and wheat flowers and that's when you know 
that it's, it's a weed. The farmer wouldn't have known that the, that the darnel and the wheat were growing together. By the time the trick is revealed, the roots would have already intermingled. To pull the weeds out would mean that you would destroy the wheat as well. The harvest already would be yielding less than anticipated. And to prematurely remove the weeds would ensure that it would be a very small harvest. And so this farmer in our parable waits until the harvest is ready and the weeds and the wheat are collected together. The wheat being stored and the weeds becoming fuel for later burning. We understand the enemy coexisting with the righteous as we examine our own context. We are actively watching the enemy destroy everything we value as a country, as humanity. We know that today the cry goes out, how long, O oh Lord, how long? And the disciples asked Jesus, please explain this parable. At the end of the age, those who are evil will be tossed into the furnace of fire. And again, Episcopalians don't have good language around this, but we understand this to be hell. And there they will find weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the righteous, well, the righteous will shine for all eternity with our creator. Now the parable you recall was told to inform the listener more about the kingdom of heaven, to help the listener understand the abundance of God, the deep love that God has for God's creation. What we can hear in this is that God is giving us all the opportunity to grow into righteousness. We won't always get it right. In fact, very frequently we will get it wrong. But God will be patient with us, just as God will be patient with those who are unjust. The scriptures also tell us that those who have done good will rise to life and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. And this sentence is, that verse is found in, in the gospel according to John. In the letter to the Galatians, Paul writes, chapter six, verse nine, Paul writes, let us not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. We cannot give up. This year has brought with us a number of significant losses. We've experienced loss of life as a country in astronomical numbers. And at this time also, we have lost giants in the civil rights movement. Joseph Lowry earlier this year, C.T. Vivian and John Lewis on the same day of this week. It might feel like it's just time to sit down and stop. They worked so hard and we still have so far to go. A void has emerged. I would offer for us and for myself that the baton has been passed. We cannot grow weary in doing right. We cannot give up. A few months back, it was March, March 1st, 2020. John Lewis went to Selma and stood on the Edmund Pettus Bridge to commemorate Bloody Sunday. And this is what Mr. Lewis said. We were beaten we were tear gassed. I thought I was going to die on this bridge. But somehow and some way, 
God Almighty helped me here. We cannot give up now. We cannot give in. We must keep the faith, keep our eyes on the prize, end quote. Keep our eyes on the prize. As people of faith, we are called to build up the kingdom of heaven. We are called to energize the righteous. We are called to not let evil take over. We must not grow weary in doing good. God will attend to all causes of sin and God will attend to all that evil does. God is one who redeems. Let us be the ones who strive for righteousness. Amen. for the prayers of the people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Marianne, our bishop, and leaders of this parish. We pray for the Episcopal Church in the Philippines and the Most Reverend Joel Atuig Pascal. My apologies, I'm trying to move the photo. Okay, got it. Uh, we pray for Prime Bishop of the Philippines in the Anglican cycle of prayer, for the Church of St. Mary Magdalene in Wheaton, uh, Miss Magdalena, for the St. Christopher's Church, New Carrollton in the diocesan cycle of prayer, and for Epiphany's lay readers in the parish cycle of prayer. We pray for Donald, our president, for Congress, and for our courts, and for Muriel, our mayor. We pray for all who suffer racial injustice and violence, for those protesting, for those unhoused, for healthcare workers, and those who are facing job, housing, and food insecurity, and for all impacted by the COVID-19 coronavirus. We pray for those who have died, including Kathy Perkinson. We pray for all who seek healing in mind, body, and spirit or relationship, among them Tristan, Pete, Terry, Frank, and the family of Michael, Clyde, Gail, Sandy, Billy, Paul, Brianna, Susan, Sydney, Thomas, Chelsea, Michael, Ingrid, Pushayan, Cheryl, Adam, Michelle, Donald, Michael, Billy, Miss Bertha, Zion, Red, Cheryl, Florencia, Polonia and Carmen, family of Javier, Jerry, and Raphael and their family, Julius, Amelia, Sandra, Greg, Lulu, Ruth, Elizabeth, Donald, Gail, Derek, Barbara, Miss Kat, Leah, Jared, David, Audrey, Judy, and Cynthia. We also invite sustaining prayer for those with long-term challenges, including Vaughn, Johnny, Dakota, Alice, David, Jean, Beatrice, Diane, Henrietta, Kay, Benetta, Ingrid, Joan, Alvin, Zalira, 
Bill, Holly, Thelma, William, Anne, Albert, Olivia, Sophia, Lloyd, Iris, Trisha, and Eleanor. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. And what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectively to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you'd like intercessions, you can add them into the chat box at this time. I ask your prayers for Annie and Lambert, whose postponed wedding will occur this upcoming Saturday. We pray for Beth and Mary, for Stephanie and her grief, for Sid and his family as a heart condition is diagnosed. For Lloyd's cousin, John, who's having multiple strokes, who after having multiple strokes died this past week from COVID-19. Continued healing (coughs) for Chester, for Chester Hart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Ascribe to the Lord the honor, do his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the choir. You all did a fabulous job. Thank you, Carter, for your soloing today. Thank you, uh, Jensen, again, for the magic that you do on those keys. It is much appreciated. Uh, thank you again to Anya for um, leading us through our virtual uh, experience here. We are learning and I think we're doing a pretty good job. It's becoming more smooth. Thank you to our readers today. Um, the Faith and Empire Formation class begins uh, this week. Uh, the reading started last week. Uh, Dawson, do you have anything? There, there are four groups. So many people signed up. So there are four groups, two groups at 1230 and two groups at 630. Uh, you will, I think there's a big group today, and then you'll be divided into yeah. your Actually, there are three groups today and two tonight. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing how we have, I think, 42 people involved. I'm really looking forward to it. And I think we'll learn a lot as a group and go out into the world with uh, renewed knowledge about who we are to be in, in the world as good citizens by studying the book of Daniel. Thank you. Is there another slide, Anya? Nope. So that is, oh yeah, there is. Uh, I continue to have office hours. Those are just suggested times. If you'd like to talk to me, you're welcome to just send me an email and we can arrange a time to talk. Coffee hour continues. Is that accurate, Loy and Carter, at 9.30? No, we're likely moving to after the service, so it'll be clear in Tuesday's um, e-blast. Thank you. And healing services are led by our seminarian, who is the deacon out of Wisconsin, Mike, uh, and that is at 1210 on Facebook Live. Mike today is at his home parish um, via Zoom preaching, and so we pray for him as he, as he offers his sermon uh, back to them. Uh, this past week, we did the Lamentation Confession Commitment to Hope service. I think it was absolutely wonderful. Um, thank you to the Episcopal Evangelism Society, the Episcopal Diocese of Washington, and the National Church for getting us the technology and other resources so that we could help feed people and live stream the service. Thank you to Sati, who um, helped write the liturgy and uh, pushed me to think broader and bigger. Uh, thank you to Lisa and Caroline, who went through the service with a fine tooth comb so that it would all make sense. Thank you to Crystal and Mike for uh, making sure that all of our guests had food and water because it was quite hot. Uh, Mr. Pete sang beautifully, Dawson and David uh, read scripture and prayer for us and the bishop was present also. If you were not able to see the service either via live stream or in person, uh, it is still available and I think it's on our website so that you can check it out. I, I think it was absolutely phenomenal. And we had over 400 people watch on our Facebook page. And um, I think it was 50 on our uh, YouTube page. So <laughs> that was a good showing. So I hope you have an opportunity to check it out. Uh, if you are visiting with us today and would like to find out <coughs> more information about the Church of the Epiphany in downtown DC, you are welcome to join our mailing list, follow us on social media, and of course, we welcome any prayer requests you have throughout the course of the week via info at epiphanydc.org. At this time, we invite you to about 10 minutes of a coffee hour post-service. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. This hey. is Lloyd Namar, and I'd make another announcement that if anyone's interested in supporting the service on a technological, in a technological way or through readings, please let us know that as well. You can send an email to communications at epiphanydc.org and Anya will make sure that it gets to the right people. <laughs>